right, seven o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order, the regular select yeah, yes, board meeting of September 12th, 2017. <coughs> and the first item of business is approval of the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any changes? There's one. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she sweeps in from the sides. It's just a deletion of Don and Donahue's name from the list of people. In the oh, you're on the approval of the minutes. Oh, we're on the approval of the agenda. We're just doing agenda so far. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. You're ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no uh, changes to the agenda, uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Now, uh, Approval of the minutes of our August 22nd regular select board meeting. All right, yeah. I'll move to approve the main meeting minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, and changes, Laura? <laughs> Just what I said. Oh, Come and on. also Farhad's. But we weren't paying attention to because it wasn't and at point yet. But no. Farhad's on there. He's Farhad's on Farhad's name is misspelled. Oh, uh, yeah, there's an R. So, oh. yep. So, just a minor. Correction. <laughs> Any other changes? Okay, hearing no other changes, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, citizen comments. Is there anyone who's here for something that's not on the agenda item? Please. If you could come up to the table and, and uh, state your name and, and address us from the table because there's a mic there and this is telecast. Oh, this is to pass down to my you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Amy Mackinich, and I'm a resident of Middlebury. And uh, I'm here tonight to try and open a discussion about an issue that I think ought to be pursued in Middlebury, and that had to do with banning plastic bags from the town of Middlebury, from uh, retail establishments. And I got involved in this issue because I saw this letter to the editor that um, I just passed out. And this letter, which appeared in the Vermont Journal um, last month, it was written by a longtime resident of Montpelier who moved to the Berkshires. And she wrote this letter to the editor about her effort in her town to have plastic bags banned. And she writes that in the last paragraph um, that 55 Massachusetts towns have banned plastic bags. They stopped waiting for the legislature. And that um, she's kind of saying, what's the matter with you, Vermont? No towns in Vermont have pursued this. And in the last um, paragraph, she says, I strongly encourage Vermont town officials and those in surrounding towns to pursue a ban. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. uses 100 billion plastic shopping bags annually. An estimated 12 million barrels of oil is required to make them. So these are dirty in two ways. It takes um, oil to make them, and then they're around forever. They don't degrade. Um, if we all do our part to reduce this source of littering, ocean pollution, and drain on resources, our Earth will be healthier, as well future generations. And I thought, what a wonderful project for Middlebury. We can be leaders in the state of Vermont, provide a model for other towns to follow. And um, I happened to download a copy of the bylaws that this town passed, and um, what I'd like to do in just trying to feel around this issue is uh, send those electronically to you. It's a four-page um, bylaws. And I guess I want to ask tonight um, for advice or directions to pursue. Um, um, I have a list of sort of uh, agenda items that I can do, but maybe from the select board perspective, you have some insight or suggestions for me about how to push this along. So that's why I'm here. 
So I, I invited Amy because I thought she could get some direction from us, and I know that um, we can talk to you about the logistics of how to do an ordinance, you know, and to move in that direction. And at the same time, I wanted you to know that um, we do have the Addison County Solid Waste District, and that, that might be a good stakeholder to talk to about this project and just see what they know about it. And I also wanted to share something that Kathleen brought back as a souvenir from a trip that you had made, Kathleen, some time ago, which was this tote from Charleston um, in South Carolina, right? In Rhode Island. Rhode Island, Rhode Island. Um, and so uh, they were also making an effort to reduce plastic waste. So they didn't ban plastic bags, but they sent this letter to all residents, I guess, just saying that environmental pollution with plastic is reaching epic proportions, to your point, you know, and that we're offering you this canvas bag. So they weren't banning it, but they were offering a message and, and a tote that also branded the town. So this might be a, a nice coupling project or another consideration if we get stuck, you know, on the ordinance. I mean, it's just something that we could consider and a nice message. So I just wanted you to know about that and I can get a copy of this letter and this, you can borrow the bag and you can see they also created a decal, you know, which mm. um, came with, mm. with the bag. So again, just branding the town is beautiful and committed to reducing waste. So th those were some of my comments. Well, I mean, there is a procedure, of yes. course. I mean, citizens' initiative mm -hmm. to, um, by petition, to have the town consider mm -hmm. an ordinance like this. And it would seem to me that if we were to do something like this, it would be better that it be considered a town meeting rather than the select board simply mm -hmm. acting. I mean, I would feel more comfortable if the, the town were to discuss this and say, yes, we should do this. So there is a way of getting it into the political process that uh, citizens, um, mm -hmm. you have someone sitting behind you who knows the process very well. <laughs> and, and I think that, um, mm -hmm. you know, I would suggest, I, I certainly am symp sympathetic with the idea, and um, I would encourage you to consider uh, taking steps in that direction. So do you know that our town meeting is in March? And so yeah. we would be using so there's time. Yeah, right. the next months to build toward that. Okay, great. My suggestion would be um, it would get a lot more traction if you had local businesses yes. sign on to mm -hmm. agree that they would, because there is a cost involved Mm -hmm. for them as well and you know but if they see how many other mm -hmm. businesses are signed on then it does tend to have um, a greater impact of those who are willing to take on that that cost and that changeover too. There is a Middlebury business partnership mm -hmm. that might be. That's, great that's uh, mm -hmm. yeah it, it's, that's the downtown you talking about the better Middlebury business partnership the BMP or whatever um, I don't think the grocery stores are necessarily in that, right. and so I, I, yeah. I, I have heard what you said, and, and I've got to read ahead very quickly today. But you know, I run a business too, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I, I think that we should take it under advisement, and then look, kind of talk about what the process might look like, and maybe give you some advice on on how to proceed. Mm -hmm as a private citizen trying to get something started. Uh, we've got a lot on our plate as a select board and I don't mm -hmm. think that it's appropriate for us to, to start something at the select board level of, of this magnitude mm -hmm. um, at this time because it takes a lot of staff hours and, and frankly it, ought to, it needs to go through uh, a lot of public input before we adopt a, a change to our ordinance. But <clears throat> I think the best that, so that we can continue on with our agenda is understanding what, what you're looking for I think we need to sketch out for you what that process might look like and and then sure. so we're both kind of educated how that would go and uh, and then provide you our thoughts on that okay okay wonderful thank you yeah thanks Amy however from an exploratory point of view I think the two biggest 
distributors would be to grocery stores, which happen to their, their New England chains, and to find out how, in fact, they've reacted to it. I mean, Shaw's is a Massachusetts company, and Hannaford's is a Maine company, and they're all over. And to find out how they um, adapted to it, because, in fact, buy in there, that's always already going to be a big help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dave, Chief Shaw, Ron. you're on. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I'd like to introduce the, the grant committee to you. Uh, Firefighter Leroy Graham, uh, Lieutenant Jeff Carpenter, Assistant Chief Pat Shaw. These guys have put in over 100 hours of, uh, of work uh, to place the, the grant in its process, to submit the grant, and to receive the, the award of the grant. Um, the committee is here tonight asking you to approve two purchase orders this evening. <coughs> One to Motorola Solutions for 200 thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and one to Radio North for twenty six thousand three hundred thirteen Motorola solutions will provide the bulk of the radio equipment in this purchase Radio North will provide the minor radio equipment accessories and the complete installation we'd also ask that the five percent share that is required by the FEMA grant come from the FY 1819 capital budget and the fire department under radios Questions of the committee? I, I, what you just said doesn't match what? Correct. In our packet? Correct. Okay. It's ever evolving, so we're. Okay. Yes. Would you like to explain the difference? Sure. So, what we were asking for originally was. The board to award all of it to Radio North. So, uh, Pat, why don't you go ahead and explain the, the reason why all of it can't go to Radio North, if you would, please. So there's uh, the radios that the FEMA grant uh, directed us to go in. And, uh, if you apply for this grant, the, the federal people mandate pretty much what, where they want you to go. So uh, we picked a uh, radio that's a Tier 3 radio. They call it Tier 3, so Tiers 1 and 2 are sold by the vendors, Radio North, um, Berlin Communications, Sun of Bee Radio of New Hampshire. And the P25 brand is a tier three, which is sold by, directly by Motorola Solutions of Chicago, Illinois. It's a specific radio that they hang on to. They used to let it out, and then three years ago, they brought it back in on that particular P25 brand. It's a, it's a high-end radio high typically radio. used by government agencies, and so they bring that back under their umbrella to control only on a corporate level, not through a vendor. So that's so is that like the base station or something? No, that would be the, 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 more, the mobiles and the portables. Correct. Both of them. Yes. Right. So, so, so they're the supplier. Yes. Correct. And then Radio Solutions are they, or Radio Correct. North are they? The installer. Right. The installer. installer and some minor Correct. radio equipment and the accessories. Right. So the numbers again were? The numbers again were 200,880 to Motorola Solutions. And Radio North would be 26,313. So the dollars add up to the same? The dollar is the exact amount, it's yes. Just how, who the right. checks are cut to. Exactly. Who we're procuring from. Oh, okay. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We, we initially had it all under Radio North and then realized that it has to come from under the way the purchasing policy would be, we'd have to have separate POs for, for those. Yep. We can't go through Radio North to go to Burlington or go to Motor Order Solutions. Okay, makes sense. Correct. Okay. Other questions, comments? Go ahead. Kathleen, did we, didn't we put some money in the capital budget for 1718 for radios? That was for the repeater. Correct. The repeater on so top of it was separate from. That is a separate one. Okay, so that's why we're putting it in the. 
correct. The 5% in the 1819? Okay. Yeah. Actually, no, that 5% will come out of the, there's another line item in capital for radios, which we were trying to work toward new portable radios and new mobile radios. And you had it. The repeater is yeah. separate, yeah. Just Originally, it was spread out over two years, but you're asking for it all to be purchased now, right? No, the repeater no. is a whole separate animal. Oh, yes. So we haven't gotten to the 1819. Correct. We're looking yeah. to forward spend. So it's, it's, it's a little different than what we normally do. Right. But I was looking at it, just the different money and things like that. We haven't approved that money yet, so it's, it is a little different to sort of award it now, but I think there's a time and a place to sort of work with that, and I think based on the grant that they got and everything that they're going through, and the fact that we all got on the same page last year with your budget, I, I do feel okay with playing with this a little bit, um, but it is unusual because we haven't approved that money yet. Correct. This is a uh, phenomenal effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, just looking at this thing, this is, uh, yeah, their grant scored in the upper 90 percentile. These guys really put their they put their nose to the grindstone and really made it happen. So this is really kind of following the trend we saw with the ladder truck because it's really well thought out and analyzed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's impressive. So it's how does one argue against proceeding with this, especially for the fact of what it's going to offer and it's going to offer for a long time. I mean, this this is where we're at where we're going to stay for a while so yeah and and with you know susan's help we've got that other stuff all straightened out and we should be able to support these moving forward quite nicely so the only question i have technically is for kathleen because we haven't approved that it's not like we can pull it out of there but i tried to work the numbers and i think there's between all of the other fighter fighting gear that they have there is that amount left in there but just barely so i think it's okay but I don't think we can technically say it this way. Right, so you'd be earmarking, um, you'd be basically allowing them to deficit spend in this year. Right. For, and knowing that the money would be there for next year. Right, so it's a little. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't touch capital until after the, the budget is, the existing capital that's in there until after the next year's budget is approved. Basically it would come out of the culmination of all those other accounts. So, yeah, yeah, and you would want to put that back right. and then go forward. I'm assuming that's the best way to... I, I think we just keep it in that line item, and so the bottom line um, right, most likely turn out okay. I think it'll turn out okay because we don't really need all the rest of it because you've got the rest of the money for from the grant. So right. saving ahead, you don't have to because... Or not nearly as much because the money's already covered by the grant. Right. We'll figure it out. Say for this amount of money, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll figure willing, it out. We'll be willing yep. to make motions on this one. This is it. Please do. Okay. I'm going to make two motions. First is to <coughs> award a contract to Motorola Solutions for $200,880 and Radio North for $26,313 for a sum of $227,193 for the purchase and installation of radio equipment and mobile, two mobile repeaters for the fire department, including shipping, installation, programming. Second. Is, Boom and is second. that total correct? There was total total it was 69 cents off. So it yeah, 69 cents off. That is correct. So 208,000. 200, no, 200, 200,880 and 69 cents. So that, so I left the 69, 69 cents off. Okay, I'm not so, much of a cents guy. Okay, well, modify my motion with the 69 <laughs> cents. You said it, not us. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All in favor of the motion that Nick just made, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, and I'm not sure with the, the second motion is the way it would want to be. If what we're doing is just approving our You're approving funds, the purchase order. We're approving the purchase order for ten thousand dollars. If I need to come back to you for an authorization on the allocation of the funds, I will do that. Okay. okay. We could do it but that you're way. agreeing in concept to go that 
Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So then the second motion is to support Chief Shaw's request to um, uh, approve $10,961. Uh, to from the capital budget to cover the town's 5% share requirement under the terms of this FEMA grant. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay, any questions on that one? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Can I Thanks for the hard one? work, guys. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Heather's good. How long do they last? I mean, how long do the, will these radios, what is the life, do you know? Like, do we get five years out of it? Oh, them you'll get much years? more than that. Okay. These are, this is top end stuff. This okay. is the stuff you'll see in Boston and New York. And yep. Yeah, this is top end stuff. We're projecting that, that life cycle to be 15 years. Okay. Great. Thank you. And you went with that because we're going to need them. We're going to need them. <laughs> yeah. We need them yeah. about every other day. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, who's who's going to walk us through the survey then? I think Laura can walk you through. Laura, do you want to? Uh, okay. Are you um, prepared so to walk us through this? So we're talking about the marijuana legalization survey. Legalization of marijuana survey. Yes. Um, so you can see. Um, you can see the results in your packet. I'm not sure that the viewers could see it, but they could if they go to our packet online. But basically it shows that um, the majority of, of the respondents of which we had, and Kathleen's putting it up there, both male and female um, su supported legalizing marijuana. Um, we looked at Middlebury residents, uh, and of the Middlebury residents that responded to the survey, 68. 3% support it, so we know that. Um, we also asked how people felt about the VLTC's position on his being against legalization, and they felt that we should oppose that. Um, so 65.9% of Middlebury voters felt that we should direct the league to not oppose legalizing marijuana. Um, we asked about allowing municipalities to impose a local tax on marijuana sales above whatever taxes the state imposes to cover regulation and local public safety costs, knowing what we heard in previous meetings about that being one of the reasons why the league was opposing it, you know, um, that there wouldn't be adequate uh, financing for regulating it. and. Most of the respondents supported this, that we could charge an extra tax on top of whatever maybe the state might tax that we could then use for prevention or treatment or whatever, um, as well as the enforcement. So that was how they directed us. And then we asked if legalized, um, would, would voters, would residents, would respondents to the survey allow municipalities to regulate the siting of marijuana businesses? And the majority did support that. And of Middlebury voters, 62% supported that, roughly. So that was sort of the direction that we got. Um, we also, f um, obviously, people felt that we should have some say over where these businesses would occur. So a majority cited that as well. So that gave us a pretty clear indication of where people f landed on the issue. And that should inform us in terms of directing the league, I think, um, or 
I don't know, we can have a discussion about that now that we've gotten this input. We also um, were asked how the response to this survey compared to other surveys we've done recently. And this has been an extremely high response. And this was in August, you know, compared to other surveys. So, so we're considering that too, like this was a pretty high response. And it would be interesting to know if the response would have been different if we had notified people by mail. You know, I don't know if our results would have been any different if we had done that. But it is something to consider, you know, in the future. It made me think again about survey design and, you know, the timing of surveys and how we, how we communicate them. I, I mean, people it, did know about it if they watched us on MCTV. They did hear about it if they read the Addison Independent. They did learn about it if they were on our town listserv. But if you didn't get those things, then you didn't know about the survey. Even though there was a hard copy that you could complete in the town office, it wasn't like it got mailed to everybody and they could fill it in that way if they wanted to, as well as electronically. Although what we're learning is that um, having people fill in surveys electronically makes the data computation a whole lot easier. So does it do any does it do anything as far I, I'd be curious uh, statistics uh, if it does anything as far as um, improving or reducing the accuracy of a, of a sample? when you send it out and it's voluntarily as opposed to like a called survey, you know, in the presidential mm -hmm. survey. What's, what's the statistical error on a survey of this kind? I don't know. And that's something for us to learn. You know, and we are constantly learning about surveys and we know that we wanted, we wanted to reach out to Middlebury College on this one, but we, we weren't successful and we had a deadline for getting a response in yeah. time for the, the town fair. Um, so, here we are, <laughs> but it's a good question. I did hear about it mm -hmm. on the news on the local radio station, mm -hmm. and you know they had put something in there. Um, I saw in two different papers. Mm -hmm. I think it was pretty well publicized for a pretty short time frame, and I thought the response was pretty good. And to Brian's question, one thing I look at is. Um, what's what are the demographics reached and do you see a good a good you know cross section. good cross section you know like this it was split almost 50 50 male female right it was a little higher in the younger mm -hmm. but it wasn't extra like it wasn't like you know all 700 middlebury right. college and you're seeing it on the out. screen here like we had um, a good range of older and younger i did. thought mm -hmm. so to me when i look at that's what those mm -hmm. questions are important for me even though i'm not an expert by any means but it it, it makes it the information more valuable mm -hmm. than if it was obviously skewed in one direction or another Comments, uh, thoughts on, so we have until um, uh, our next meeting, I believe it is, that yeah, the next meeting we need to um, have designated, uh, and we haven't done this yet, maybe, and it's not on the agenda, so we probably shouldn't tonight, but we need to designate um, our representative um, Kathleen has represented us at the, the last several. Um, and I don't know as though anybody has a burning desire to go down there uh, to the meeting, but uh, I think Kathleen has probably got it on her calendar. And, uh, and then we need to, by the next meeting, provide our delegate the guidance how we want them to vote when it comes to Mm -hmm. uh, the league's policy and on uh, on marijuana. I think that's the contentious issue that mm -hmm. we've seen on their agenda. And so, um, if if is there desire to have any discussion on our position this evening on this? Has the league settled on what they want 
um, the stance that I, I remember there was talk that was in draft, and then I think I saw something, but then I'm not, yeah, I don't I remember. I exactly. that to you, but I'll do that again before your next meeting Just, so you can thank you. I th on that. I think I remember, but then I was like, man, I'm not really sure. So. I think it was conditional, like, so, like, that they would support its legalization if there was enough money put right. in the budget for its enforcement. I just want to make sure I was reading it correctly. Regulation. Okay. I don't, I don't know that I was necessarily opposed to what the VLCT was proposing. I thought that they were really looking out for the town's interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think there's still some big issues that need to be worked out, and I'm not sure I'm ready to, s even if the community wants it, I'm not sure that we have the not that not that I'm opposed necessarily either, but are all the pieces in place to make it happen the way it should, I right. guess. And I'm not convinced, and I felt like um, the organization that I can't remember the acronym for. <laughs> the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Yes, yeah. thank you. Was, was doing a pretty good job of trying to keep a handle on that for us. So... <coughs> You want me to read the so here's their yes, new please. proposed their new proposed language is that marijuana should not be legalized for recreational purposes until all public safety concerns are adequately addressed so they've shifted significantly from mm -hmm. the policy from last year do they list what those policy <clears throat> public safety concerns are that's uh, there's been a lot of uh, testimony um, over at the state house about concerns and in fact uh, there uh, when he came here he talked about uh, policing okay. enforcement mm -hmm. uh, I think dealing with uh, driving under the influence and how okay. he, there, there was several of the different public safety concerns that were brought up are they listed somewhere that we could see because that's a that's a Good statement, but I, I kind of. Well, I'm not sure that there's. Uh, I mean, personally, I. I just yeah. Because people say like, well, what are those? I. Oh. It would just be curious. I. There's, there's I, several. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear what Let you're see. saying. I, I think regardless of how people feel about the the legislation itself our job is to look out for Middlebury and I think the league does do a good job of looking out for municipalities and the costs and the work that we have to do so um, something like that is a statement though I it, wish I knew what it, those were here's one of their things okay. providing public safety officials with the authority information and funding to com combat drug driving and other drug related crimes okay so they're all right there. Providing the support for presently unmet social service needs in communi communities. Mm -hmm. Number eight. It's not related to that. Okay. Yeah, I think I All think right. that's a. We'll find it's, them in there. Yeah, there, well, there's a couple different places. They, I remember from when he went through it, there was a couple places in here, but it's primarily in the public safety. Okay. So, uh, does the rest of the board feel like if we agree with what they're proposing that that we're against legalization? Because I don't mm -hmm. get that sense. No, I don't think so at all. That's not what the statement is. It just says if. If it is going to be legalized, there's some concerns and costs that need to be covered. So if we support the VLCT, we're not necessarily going against what the survey is saying. We're just, we want to have everything in place before, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just I trying think to that's what I understand, but I think that um, what I've also heard and I haven't studied this as much as others have, you know, like I just tried to help mm -hmm. get the survey <laughs> created, but I haven't really delved into this issue myself very right. deeply, you know, like I'm still studying it. But what I've heard is that, you know, we're paying for the policing of it now. 
you know, and it's, it's already costing us something. They already have to know whether you're under the influence or not. So this idea that there's going to be additional cost, is it? You know, like, and how much more? Because we're already mm -hmm. having to train a force about it, this substance. So, so I've heard that. So I'm weighing that, you know, as well as um, yeah, and what's, I, your, what's your... There are still you're some saying about what could issues be, because... I, the additional can, cost would be like once you have businesses, then you have to regulate those businesses. That's a different expense than exactly. You've got mm -hmm. that. You've got employers. Uh, mm -hmm. As an employer, if somebody comes in and they're and they're intoxicated, I can give a breathalyzer and, and send them home. Mm -hmm. I have no test for somebody who I believe is under the influence of, of a drug without a blood test, which is prohibited in the state, mm -hmm. and, and so. It does create, there are other things out there, and I don't feel an obligation to necessarily vote exactly the way the, I think uh, a, a meeting or two meetings ago, Victor made a point that we have an obligation to, to do what we feel is best for the community. And I, 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 I'm a, to the point where I personally feel that we're not, until they address all these issues, you can have a very liberal, uh, demographic that believes it should all be but then you take an employer like myself and I have people driving heavy equipment mm -hmm. it can be if I don't have the authority to test them you're putting me at a disadvantage and so there's uh, unsolved issues at this point. But you're assuming that there would be increased use, and I think that's what we're hearing is, well, not necessarily, but that we already have use, so you, aren't you having to deal with this now anyway? You know, like potentially, and why would you have increased use of it? In fact, they're arguing that once it's legalized, you have more capacity for managing prevention and treatment because you'll have resources that you can dedicate to that, so I hear that. Uh, what, I'm, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. um, what would, I mean, I'm, I'm opposed to legalization. I, it's, it's a mm -hmm. cultural matter as well as a, a, a public safety matter. I think uh, the, I mean, there, are, there, are, there are large issues here. Um, but the town has expressed, or we've, we've, we have an expression of sentiment. Um, and we have a policy that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has articulated it, its recent change that it says, well, you know, we're opposed unless the public safety issues can be addressed. And I think obviously that, that, should, be, that should be the select board's concern too, public safety. Now, um, sure, um, uh, public safety is, is a constant concern and, and, and um, uh, I think we train our, our public safety officials to be aware when people are impaired for one reason or another, whether it be from taking marijuana or, or just crazy. I mean, you know, there are all sorts of emotional mm -hmm. problems and so on and so forth. But uh, the question is, of course, whether legalization would increase the circumstances and, and make it more difficult uh, to um, to provide for public safety. I, I think those are the issues that a public official, I think the governor has expressed that, that, that mm -hmm. sort of that concern. Um, and um, I don't see, you can say, well, you know, we're dealing with it now. Yes, but not officially. And I think uh, once you, uh, once you make it official, that it's all right to use marijuana. You have, I think, a uh, 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 role to play. Um, and um, even, if, even if the regulation is entirely uh, uh, sort of placed in the state, uh, there are going to be you know, our police, our, our hospitals, and so on and so forth, our teacher, our school teachers, and so on are also all, you know, going to have to be um, made aware of this. I'm not, I don't know what the result of legalization would, uh, would, would bring. I suspect it's coming because it's, I mean, there, there, there seems to be um, mm -hmm. sentiment for it and, and uh, uh, the legislature is going to address it again in the, uh, you know, when it, when it, when it convenes. Uh, but um, 
my sense would be, so far as the town is concerned, what, what the VLC is proposing is a, is a prudent. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you've put encapsulated the argument that I would have very much better than I could have. Oh, and, and it's that we're addressing it in a format of a, a public opinion poll. And we don't have the time to undertake the issue at great depth. And I think the VLCT's position that if you believe that you've done everything you can for public safety, then maybe then it's okay to pass it. Mm -hmm. And that's not only providing the authority, but the funding. And so it's gotta be a funded mandate as well at the, down to the local level. Mm -hmm. And if you give us those tools mm -hmm. and that ability, then it, you know we're not necessarily uh, lobbying against it. We're just lobbying that if the legislature that's dealing with this in much greater detail believes that it's the time and place to approve it, mm -hmm. and that we want to make sure that the, whatever we need to do at the local level to ensure public safety is taken care of. And that's, I think that's a prudent position for VLCT to take. And I'm not about to lobby against that position saying mm -hmm. it ought to be legalized regardless because that's what we're at what we would be asking if we say that we disagree with that position right well the safety issue is something that there is a lot of continuing ongoing effort to to evaluate and determine what it is um and and you're right i mean it's already there but in fact you know one of the places i work a lot is colorado along with oregon and washington mm -hmm. and they've many respects I admire them for taking this issue on and figuring out what it really means. But there are some other public safety issues that emerge. And one of them is it becomes, the product becomes a lot more available. Um, case in point, you can walk down Colfax Avenue in Denver and there are candy stores that look just like any other candy store. And you can't tell the difference between an edible gummy that is marijuana mm -hmm laced or one that's not mm -hmm. and so that becomes a public safety concern of that getting into access to children I actually found th the, the numbers did not surprise me one bit as far as statistics I think I could have predicted a 65 to 70 percent before what I put more validity on were actually the comments yep the comments were good I'm and, glad and, and you there was a, bro a broad spectrum and I found myself yeah yep. um, in many respects, agreeing with both sides. I know, but but there are things. I mean, some of them are <laughs> concerns of minors and access mm -hmm. to it. You know, that mm -hmm. part of me says, well, fine if it's in my own home or your own home. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. But it is the when it gets out into the public where it does become a safety concern, whether it's operating of a vehicle. I mean, one of the things that has impacted in places like Colorado are um, operation of Brian brought up of, of vehicles. In fact, I know of one particular case of someone who was just in close proximity and was called on duty on, his, on a railroad job and mm -hmm. suddenly found out that mm -hmm. he couldn't run on it. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's a lot more research, and, I, and it's being left up. I mean, that's where the legislature and their researchers are working on it. So I agree with Heather. I think at, our, at this stage to support the, the VLCT policy doesn't mean we're against it. Mm -hmm. It just means that we don't have the knowledge to endorse it looks well it's it's helping to inform the league too you know about this is how Middlebury seems to stand and I mean and I think it's just useful information to pass along it was also helpful for people to understand that it already is decriminalized you know mm -hmm. for small amounts so you know people some people didn't know that you know and it's and it's also possible to get it for medical purposes and some people don't know that because there were there were a lot of passionate um, testimonies about the medicinal um, right. value of it but you c you can get it you know um, so so that was good for people to recognize so the survey may, may have helped one of the things I actually heard from some law enforcement people in, in Oregon mm -hmm. was not only the matter of the funding mm -hmm. but it's the technical resources to properly train um, there are mm -hmm. some cases where the funding showed up but there wasn't the expertise on how to train mm -hmm. And well, how to use that properly. So that really has to go hand in hand. It's not just a matter of the money. Right. Well, I think, well, Betty sent us a message where she said, you know, it's, you're committing to six months of training for that. If 
is what I guess they heard in the legislature. So, yeah, those are things to consider. So yeah. anyway, that's where we are, and I know that we have a little bit of time to mull how we want to direct the league. It sounds like we're in favor of of supporting the league as it's written. You know, the language that they're using right now. I I am, but I would also find it helpful if those public safety issues were defined or at least listed somewhere. It would be helpful for me to know that. I think they're in the process of defining them. I don't think they know mm -hmm. they are yet. I think that that's what's emerging, and I think that you know they've captured some, but they're, they're continuing to do well, research to figure out what whatever the whatever the list is as it stands would just mm -hmm. be helpful for me to know if I'm going to be voting on public the public safety concerns as defined. I would kind of like to know what those are for myself. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to follow that. That's mm -hmm. part of my job too, is that if there's those, there's gonna be money for them, how do we track that? That might be something that we have to look at in our town going forward that we, if I don't know what those are, how can I keep an eye out for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that. Can, can you ask them yeah. so that we have it for our uh, 26? I'm still curious by the high response rate we got, you know, to this survey, to this particular survey at the time of year that we did it, you know, which was end of August. So I'm, I understand like we could have predicted the percentages, but I don't know that I could have predicted this response rate. <laughs> I think it's an area that people are passionate about on both sides. Yeah. And so they took the time to get on. It was, it was nice that they took the time. And the, how many people provided additional comments? Because a lot of, mm -hmm. I mean, you could have flown through the survey without, mm -hmm. if you didn't provide any comments, but taking the time to provide yeah. some comments. One of, the, one of the things that I was interested in was the discussion on front porch forum about mm -hmm. this issue. Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed like one of the biggest arguments was for the medicinal purposes, but if that's already legalized, Mm -hmm. um, it is. It, which it is. You 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 wonder yeah. <laughs> what what the argument was that's, about. That's and it's been decriminalized as well. So yeah. Far. Ross, I think it's important for the board to know that there are in some Scandinavian countries, all drugs are legal, not just marijuana, and they have less problems with drug abuse and addiction than we do in the United States, and it's because they have universal health care and they treat drug use and addiction as a health issue. And I would like to suggest mm. that this board consider publicly coming out in favor of universal health care. One, it's a public safety issue, which you've said you are concerned about. If someone doesn't have access to health care, their safety their is, is, is an issue. But secondly, it can help mitigate situations such as this, as if marijuana becomes legal or any other drug, Great idea, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> you yeah. talk about a pretty huge, huge issue that we have you yet just to come out with it publicly and let the legislators so. know, let the league know. I mean, yeah. anyone yeah. you deal with, just so that they know your position, and maybe they'll push and you know, it creates a groundswell, yeah. and, and maybe we can make it happen. I think yes. we have to pick our pick our issues, though. Yes. <laughs> so. Are you talking in the state or in the federal government? Both, although, you know, the states are leading our, the we, way. The hmm? states are lead, tend to be leading the way, right? That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, Vermont uh, made an effort and then dropped out of it. I, I, I think, you know, this is a, this is a much bigger issue, and I, I think mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure that, you know, that the, keep the peace and, and, and make this a healthy place to live. And I realize that if there were universal health care, it would be a healthier place to live. But that's not something that we can provide. No, I didn't say provide. I just said come out in favor of yeah, the public. I realize that. Show support. It puts it in, in the broader context that you're, mm -hmm. you're mentioning, which I can understand. I think that's a good point. Okay. But I, I, I have to mm -hmm. s just take issue with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I favor universal health care and, and, and single payer, uh, as far as that's concerned. and, and uh, being a beneficiary of Medicare, I, I can say that I, you know, I have you know, personal experience of, of what it's like to have something like that. On the other hand, I think that it's a mistake to use a, a body like this, um, except in, in crises, um, to lobby uh, issues that are 
uh, we, we can take a stand, say, against the President of the United States if we wanted to, and so on and so forth. And we don't, we don't do that sort of thing. And I think if we did, it would politicize the select board in a way that would be very unhealthy politically. I, I think we, our, our, our concern is the public good locally. And, and I think that we need not, I mean, it would be a mistake to enlarge that perspective and somehow politicize our, 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 our procedures. That would be, I think, harmful to the board. Just on the federal level or on the state? Because then we probably shouldn't well, do. Well, on the state, obviously, we, you know, there are certain, uh, for example, uh -huh. uh, speed limits and things like that. I mean, we can lobby the state to control, traffic control and things like that because that concerns our local safety. Uh, but I think that we, 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 we need to keep clear of larger political issues that could, I think, politicize our activities in a, in a really destructive way. I, 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 I hesitate uh, to go in that direction. I, think. I just um, don't know how the Vermont League of Cities and Towns lobby well, they lobby, they lobby the legislature uh, on, a, on an issue like this, and I think right. that's quite proper. That's okay. Okay. Just yeah. trying to clarify yeah, what yeah, your point. Yeah. yeah, I have no problem with that. Okay. So we're going to take this up at the 26th meeting, uh, or the 24th? Uh, 26th. 26th. 26th meeting. Um, and number one, uh, appoint our representative and number two uh, take a position in um, what we would advise for uh, her vote on on the VLCT policy uh, next uh, Jennifer Murray for director of planning and zoning for uh, draft revisions on the town plan It's okay. <laughs> I forget there's a vice chair. <laughs> what do we do? I'm here just for this moment. <laughs> Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so I'm just here. This isn't a formal public hearing on the town plan, but I wanted to come before you begin um, your hearing process, because you'll have two hearings on your level, just to talk in general about the town plan, let you know it's coming your way, um, maybe give you an overview of the timeline and process. Um, the Planning Commission had their hearing last, geez, last Thursday. Went pretty well. Um, we had more comments about zoning regulations than we did about the town plan, but um, uh, the town plan is on a five-year cycle. It needs to be readopted every five years. And actually, there's new legislation that says now it'll be on an eight-year cycle. But the last time it was readopted was in 2012, so we're due. Um, it expires December 11 of 2017. So, um, this, like I say, the Planning Commission has had their hearing. You'll have two more hearings on your level, probably the second meeting in September and your second meeting in October. Oh, no, the other way around, sorry. Your second meeting in October, your second meeting in November, and then hopefully we'll have it readopted in time for December. Um, just in general, um, the Planning Commission has met twice a month since September 2015. So since I've started, that's kind of what the Planning Commission has been doing. They went through every section of the town plan at least three times. The first time just to think in general about it, two more times with edits. So they've been really meticulous. Um, basically the overall themes for this readoption were to update the information that's in there. It's not a full rewrite. Um, and it was a really helpful conversation. Um, not only did it bring their new planner up to speed in terms of what the pressing issues are, uh, it really helped them take a hard look at their town plan and remember why they said certain things or sort of re-question where they were going with different things. And then we um, completely remodified our goals and recommendations. They didn't change substantially in terms of content, but we reorganized them. Um, and we tried to add more um, goals and recommendations that would help us collect data and do some visioning work um, before we got into real details of, of you know, what we want to change. So, um, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, there's an implementation section now. There's always been an implementation section, but um, it's different this year because it'll be an implementation matrix. 
um, which will be kind of like town plan light or town plan cliff notes that <laughs> you could detach and use with different committees in town to see where all what the goals and recommendations were. We've taken the goals and recommendations from the end of each um, section and put them into this implementation matrix. And we've left some open columns that talk about responsibility, status, and priority that could be used in, in the future um, as as planning um, is collaborating with different various town committees. Um, we also tried to um, streamline the town plan. The current trend in planning is to have these really tight, streamlined town plans. The town plan in Burlington reads more like a brochure. You know, it's supposed to make it very user friendly. Um, we have managed to decrease the size of our town plan by about 25%, according to our graphic designer, um, and have done so just by, you know, kind of taking out wordy language where, where, you know, maybe former writers kind of went on and on and on about things conceptually, and we tried to just tighten it up so it's really readable. Um, I just wanted to come and talk to you guys and see if there were any sort of big, um, big issues that you might have had with the town plan or big questions you wanted to ask or anything I can help answer for you before you're in a public hearing setting. I do. Please. Um, so I really thank the Planning Commission for the work on the town plan. I love the vision of it, you know, like and support it, and I like the way that it was condensed and. And it is easier to navigate the way you've configured it. So I really applaud that. And I did wonder about um, a couple of things, including the section on health and wellness and whether <clears throat> you had absorbed that somewhere else. I wasn't quite sure. But I thought that was a good section. And I, I think that there is a lot of interest in the community around those issues that were cited in the 2012 plan, especially around addiction and the need for housing related to that. You know, we've heard a couple of times <coughs> now about a need for a safe house. Um, and I didn't know if there's an opportunity to incorporate that need for that kind of housing in the housing section if you're not going to have a health and wellness section. So perhaps you could mention something there. I also thought it would be good to get something in about the counseling service of Addison County, which is a major employer and institution, because you have a section about Porter Hospital, maybe that goes under institutions if you're not going to have a dedicated health and wellness section. So, um, and I think it's a significant institution in our community, you know, that we want to be tracking and referring to, as well as a major employer. Um, so, so I wondered about that. Um, and of course, you know, we had the section on finances and, and I was wondering about where that information got absorbed or what the thinking was about eliminating that section. So if you could speak to that, that might be helpful because it's, a, of course, a, an ongoing huge concern about property taxes and managing property taxes and we seem to cover a lot of that in that section. Um, and it has some very useful charts which maybe go in the appendix, maybe get saved for the appendix. So um, those are some of my preliminary thoughts about the town plan. A minor thing, um, under the community facilities, you refer to um, MVAA, and it's been renamed since then. So that's just like an update for the plan. So it should be MREMS now. So that's just a minor point about updating that and I don't know about finally but, <laughs> but <laughs> I did I just so think far. it's a, such an important document <laughs> it's a good document um, you know like where's the reference to broadband you know I know that there was a reference to communication and the need for getting Wi-Fi downtown or that that would be a good goal but but I wasn't sure under communications if there was a reference to um, the studies we've done on broadband and maybe continued studying we want to do around that. So I thought that might be good. And maybe it was there, but I missed it. So those are some preliminary thoughts. I read everything. Um, I was excited to read it because I worked with the one in 2012. Um, I really like the matrix at the end, um, the new matrix on who's doing what. I looked at it this year with new eyes because I was working on very different committees um, back in 2012 than I am now. 
So I shared some notes with Kathleen about transportation and some of the other areas just to make sure that um, public works staff, um, that their goals are reflected in there, that we our goals match so that we match yours, you match ours, and that we all match. So um, I have a couple other things, but I can bring them to the to the meeting sometime, and hopefully that'll be. But I really liked um, the sort of who's in charge of what to accomplish those goals. I thought that was really good, because a lot of times there's these statements in there, but not really anybody owning them moving forward. So I really like that part. Great. Thanks. I also had um, one other minor thought uh, <laughs> under the transportation section. Did I cut somebody off? No. Sorry. No, 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 you didn't. <laughs> Final and then you're back. Go ahead. Good for you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> <To> be continued. <laughs> we do have electric vehicles, and there's a wider range of electric vehicles, and I don't know if you referenced that in the transportation section as well as bike parking. So we know about, and there are thankfully a lot of references to bike ped throughout the document. But, um, but it, it might be good to reference specifically the need for bike parking and security and EV parking and security, and they, maybe they go together, you know, so they can complement each other. So you're saying we have a wider range of electric vehicles now? We, or we will be getting more, a wider range of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So where do they park and where do they charge? You know, like, and, charging and um, places, yeah. yeah, charging, and it, it could be coupled with bike parking, um, which is going to grow in demand, too and security. So there's one thing about building multi-use paths that doesn't take care of bike parking and security. Um, so, so that just may be something to incorporate in the town plan language, I think. And when you say security, you mean? S like making? locking your bikes. Oh, gotcha, okay. And lighting, yeah. shelter. Yeah, okay. You mean to keep them dry? Yeah, I mean, you could position Middlebury as a real destination if you provide something like that. And we know that economic dollars follow. They do. It's been proven over and over again. So, so that was it. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple here. What about There's plastic bags? No. <laughs> Just <laughs> lots of time. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Maybe if you wanted to come in, I could address some of these for you before the hearing so that you're not tied up in hearings. Yeah. I don't know if anything, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you want me to take time now addressing those things, if, like for the edification of the rest of the board, or if you. Well, did you want to just, did, did I miss, did you go through the timeline already? She did. She did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then, uh, are there any other questions of the board? I, 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 I haven't read it yet. I, right. Did you send it to us? Um, I did not personally send it to okay, you, I, no. There's you could, a link you could um, of one of Kathleen's meetings things, and so she was ah. talking about the planning commission meeting, and then all the links, links are to hard to find. Yeah, you're there. ahead of me by a long oh. shot. That's so okay. I'm not prepared I'm to ask questions yet. <laughs> this, wasn't, <laughs> this wasn't intended to be a public hearing on it. Then? No, no, oh. no, no. I'm this sorry. This is a heads up for us. This is a heads up with the with I'm the sorry. Timeline. I would have reserved all of that. No, though. that's perfect actually, because I, you know, since you only have two public hearings, I'd love to just kind of flesh out question type things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So that. Is definitely the purpose of that's, that's, our, that's, that's our initial public hearing is, is October 24th yeah. so we have we have some those of us who are slow have time to catch up <laughs> to you speedies <laughs> well I always figure try and get ahead of it so that she has plenty of time to know the different things going on so I was over celebrating my daughter's 21st birthday this weekend oh, so there you go. I have an excuse <laughs> but it's only good for one weekend I was so. gonna say yeah. next week you got to get on it yeah. <laughs> So my question, I haven't had time to really look into it. My question, because this is the first town plan revision I've been part of, is what the procedure really should be if we have things that we want to question. Should we submit them ahead of time? Should we wait for public hearing? What, so what should the process be for us? That was very Can I respond good, to that? Yeah. So, um, Questions yeah. like, where did the health and wellness section go? Or did you remember CSAC? Like, those are totally questions I would love to answer before the public hearing, because those prepare you to answer questions from the crowd that you'll have in front of you. Mm. Um, 
comments on, you know, we'd like to see this change or that added are probably appropri are appropriate to give the Planning Commission after the first public hearing. So you'll combine your, your personal feelings in the town plan with what you hear from the crowd at that first public hearing and let the Planning Commission know. I'll be at that hearing too so I can let the Planning Commission know. And then the Planning Commission um, amends this, this report that Kathleen had up earlier. Um, when they provided you with the regulation with the um, town plan, they gave you a report that went with it. So they have to revise that report with their opinion of your opinion, <laughs> and then it comes back to you. And so, as the select board, you have the ability to change the town plan at that point. And as staff, I can provide you with language that suits your purpose. But that's where the planning commission gets an opportunity to weigh in. Then you'll have a second hearing, and hopefully, the second hearing runs really smoothly, and everybody likes the changes you made after the first hearing. Um, if not, then you can do that process again so if we have questions similar to the examples you gave mm -hmm. it would be helpful for you if we provided those prior to the hearing yeah anything I can do to prepare okay. you guys for that hearing I'm and if we to... have comments about things we want to change we should save that for the hearing um, yeah okay. I mean feel free to let me know too if you want I can start thinking about the language I would give you to try to resolve it so okay is that okay with you? I guess that's me putting myself in the yep. role of being yep. their staffer. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure every town does the it The planning commission will be there, too, at that hearing, correct? Because, like, we can't yeah. uh, answer all those questions of why they chose to do different things. Right. I mean, I can mostly field those questions, but okay. we'll have planning commission members there, too. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm sure Nancy will be there. Yeah, she was there for the, yeah. the last time. So and They've been so involved with all the different edits. It's been really refreshing as a staff member to have a planning commission that cares. <laughs> so... Can I just ask, um, how was the attendance at that first meeting? Did um, you have a good turnout? Or no, there wasn't that much turnout at all. I would say that, gee, I feel like all the people there had more zoning regulation questions than town plan questions. We were trying to parallel track the zoning regulation updates with the town plan updates, but they, the regulations have fallen off. They require a little bit more thinking. And the town plan remains strong, and it's just going to go through on, on its own. So okay. you won't have regulation questions. Okay. But on that, I appreciate actually as I'm looking through and getting to know it, that the plan has moved to a performance based document rather than prescriptive. Mm -hmm. let, let the zoning be the prescriptive and let this be the vision and the goals. And so I, I, I like that because it seems like one of the, the issues we had last time was at the time we were decreasingly relevant, but still was, was a certainly a concern was the size of businesses. Mm -hmm physical size and structure and so that um, that causes some, some debate and really that becomes more that's more of a zoning issue than, than the plan right. and uh, so I, I like the direction this is going so I applaud that effort. So Nick makes a good point and you should probably be prepared for comments like that at your hearing that's an often misunderstood thing about the town plan people see it as a zoning tool or a regulatory tool and it really should be an aspirational document a guidance document and from that should be um, taken tips for creating zoning regulations that do the that do the regulating. And there are exceptions to that rule, you know, like if you're in an Act 250 proceeding, somebody might want to look at the town plan to understand what you mean by things like community character or what are your general values and goals in this regard or that regard. Actually, what we found out reading through the town plan is we need to do more visioning work to be able to decide on those goals. When we thought about energy and solar, you know, we went through a little exercise. What are your favorite views in Middlebury? We got a little hung up on that. So, you know, we need to do, and, and that's just a really simple example. Where do you want Exchange Street to go in the future? You know, what do you want, what are your goals for downtown? We just need to do more planning work um, to think about that. I think it's dynamic enough that it can adapt. It's true. Over its five or eight year window, whatever it is. I mean, five. Well, five, but then it's, the it's next one is changing eight. to eight. It's going to eight. You missed that I missed that too. Jeez. <laughs> no, I, no, I, you, you knew that. You just were coming. No, I was reading no, the 2012 great. plan so, today, trying to prepare for this evening, and actually it was good to get. I couldn't find it. Now I found the 2017 draft. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. But I, but I, you know, my, my initial read on it is <laughs> it does take it to more of a dynamic aspect too, which is good because. We can make assumptions right now of what one section of town or other can look like. We'll find that the, the assumptions were necessarily fully correct and we need to adjust in the sense that it has the methodology to do that. 
Yeah, you're really catching what we were striving for, so that's good. It means it's readable. <laughs> well, and I didn't find the 2012 plan terribly readable today. 226 pages, and it just goes on and on. There's a lot of the same stuff in different segments. So it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't clear. And there was a lot of... There was a lot of things in there like, you know, this is how you should design a good neighborhood. This is how you should, this is how you, it was like planning for dummies sort of like, this is how you should be a good planner. You should be thinking about all these things. And, and I would rather leave that to the community to develop a process around individual um, tasks. So There was things in there too calling for activities that hadn't occurred since that time. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're not going to do something, leave it out and maybe say to be determined or something because... If you're going to call for an activity, you ought to plan it. Mm -hmm. So, the planning commission okay. said that too. And so in the to implementation it. matrix, you've got the status column. Maybe we can use that to to track things that haven't moved in a long time. Keep the committee on task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're your commission. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. All right. Any other questions ever? If not, she should get a planning grant application discussion. I believe. You also need a motion. Uh, oh yes, for the twenty fourth. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I can make that motion if you want. Go ahead. Um, to um, make a motion to authorize Town Manager Kathleen Ramsey to warn a public hearing to discuss proposed updates to the Middlebury Town Plan for Tuesday, October 24th, in accordance with um, 24 VSA 4385. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, and we have their motion. Yep. Okay. So every year in the fall, the municipal planning grant comes along, and um, planners and planning commissions everywhere love the municipal planning grant because that's a grant that allows you to do studies and um, you know real planning work that's often hard to fund through other grant programs. And so um, you know usually we try to use a municipal planning grant for a really pure planning project, but. What we're finding is that the timing is hard for us this year because we've just finished the town plan. There's a lot of goals and recommendations in there for studies, reports, planning projects, but we really hadn't, we haven't had enough time to organize ourselves around um, figuring out which of those goals we want to advance first um, in the planning realm. We haven't had our, we're going to have a retreat actually in a couple weeks, which will be nice, and it'll be sort of an organizational meeting for us to try to um, get our ducks in a row. But it's just um, the timing is bad for this year. But we didn't want to let the municipal planning grant go. So we thought it might be nice to spend that design or that um, planning money on doing a design of somewhere, preferably in downtown. So um, we just finished the bike ped demonstration project, and I'm still um, collating all the data from that. Um, we did some surveys, paper and electronic, and we have some input that the, um, that the people who are at the different locations gathered while they were out there. Um, and it seems like, I don't know, Seymour, Seymour Street was, um, was a location that I really asked local motion to in include, and the, and the committee went for that, from Greg's Market to the Congregational Church. It just feels to me uh, like a planner that this is a potential gateway into downtown, which is a little bit wide. It feels like a tumbleweed's going to blow past me going down that section of Seymour Street. It doesn't seem to have a pedestrian scale and like a real neighborhood feel to it. Um, there's a lot of trucks that need to be able to pass safely down that road, but I think there's more that we could do to just sort of beautify that section coming into downtown. Um, and I feel like we would have a chance at being competitive for a streetscape design grant through the municipal planning grant program this year um, because we've done this demo project and we've heard good things about people wanting something done in that area. Um, and we also have things coming up after the railroad project, the undergrounding of utilities along Seymour Street and the extension of sidewalk along that street. We also have um, the potential for relocating a, a for putting the train platform somewhere in the downtown area it could potentially be Seymour for all we know. Um, so all those things together just seem to point toward that area of town. It would be a very simple grant application to write and I thought we should just give it a shot. Um, the other nice thing about it is you have a downtown improvement, um, the downtown transportation grant that comes out every year as well and that's implementation funding. So if you designed it one year with the MPG grant you could maybe implement it the next year or the year after using it. Uh, downtown transportation grant so those two funding sources marry nice together we're going to go talk to the 
um, infrastructure committee about this later in the week too. Not that we want to dangle the MPG grant in front of the infrastructure committee because we like it for planning projects, but. <laughs> That's a dangerous person. It is, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I have to uh, agree with Jennifer about the wisdom of looking at Seymour Street for all the reasons that she just explained. Mm -hmm. It certainly wasn't on my radar as a mid-safe routes uh, proponent, that particular, because we've had other connectivity concerns, maybe, that mm -hmm. parents would be looking at, not really the feel of Seymour Street as you're coming into uh, downtown Middlebury, but I see the wisdom of it, and I can see, you know, especially with Greg's Market area, you know, that whole swath where we also got some technical expertise, that would be good to include mm -hmm. as well. We know that that intersection is troublesome. So I think it would be really great. Laura and I tried painting a crosswalk in that intersection. It didn't go very well. <laughs> so you would take uh -huh. that intersection into as part of the whole planning, really? That 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 would be that'd be a pretty big undertaking for a, for a grant this size. So maybe not up there, uh -huh. uh, but the... I was thinking really simple streetscape improvement the plans. Streetscape, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Could be. Uh, give me an idea what you're thinking on streetscape. Oh, or? sure. Um, the crosswalk, the, the survey results indicated that the crosswalk that went between um, the National Bank over to... Elm Street. Uh, Elm Street? Uh, or no. Methodist? No, Methodist Lane. Methodist Lane um, was pretty popular with people. Um, so we could formalize that crosswalk, and we could do um, we could do bump outs there, so that um, there were flowers and a concrete bump out that showed passers, like trucks and things like that, that there were people waiting in the crosswalk. It would improve safety along there. Um, and then I was just going to leave a really open scope. I thought we could work through a public process with a consultant to design streetscape improvements, like bump out. So I know bump out is kind of a dirty word. We would have to be careful that we didn't. Um, interfere with the truck traffic mm -hmm. but just something to slow down traffic through that area and give it more of a human scale so that when you're walking through there or you're biking through there you feel like you're in a neighborhood and not on the side of a highway coupled with some landscaping noticed, for beautification yeah and I don't know if you noticed the planters that we we put out in front of the National Bank of Middlebury too just to again help people scale that better mm -hmm. and also beautify it yeah, um. I, I read all the comments mm -hmm. too, and it was interesting because some of the comments were that basically that felt that some of the bicyclists, at least a couple of them, felt that it made them made okay. it a more dangerous street because right. it forced them out into the. I mean, that's one street that's wide enough that bicyclists have a pretty good shoulder to bicycle on, and it and it constrained that shoulder where they were going along, and so mm -hmm. I, I I suppose that it would be just. We're not locked into whatever design you come up with. Is that right? I think what we process? recognize is that there was a way to have placed those planters so that the cyclists could still on the backside. On the backside. There was a comment but about I think that. What I noticed with the pop up is that things got moved. Every single time I went by, I was like, hey, wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> it's a so, great way to figure out what works. So it's really, yeah, it was a great way to figure out what works and what doesn't. But yeah, I think we could easily address that. And so I wouldn't want to lock into the design we used for the, the pop-up project because that was just local motion's idea. I'd want to use a consultant to throw out some other ideas too. And then we'd have a public process. Collect input. public input. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I ask a couple questions? Please. Uh, the implementation grant that you mentioned, do you happen to know off the top of your head what the match is for that? Mm. And is that the grant source we've used for the Exchange Street sidewalk project, or is this different? No, this is this would be different. Okay, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to move this project up in priority over the Exchange Street project. We have used the downtown transportation grant for things like um, street lights in the downtown and the park and ride work. Is that that's that was the park and ride grant? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So the the only thing I worry about is I know mm -hmm. in infrastructure we have quite a few projects, big projects, that need to happen. And so I just worry about money and, <clears throat> but I don't see any reason why if we couldn't apply for a grant and see what sure. they come. I just worry about being able to afford it and make it ain't happen, knowing what other projects that we need to get done, so. What's, what's the uh, range of, of grants? Of this, this particular grant? 
um, $15,000. So it's not huge. It's enough to do a little study of some sort. Even if we have a design, it doesn't lock us into a demand, the requirement to build it out in any specific timeline. Is Right. Right. Is that what you're talking about? Right. I just, you know, we do, I'm just thinking about this um, stormwater thing we did. Yeah. And we get a grant to do a design for something, and then everybody gets all excited to do it, and they want to see it happen, and and... I just want to think a little bit ahead of time about what our priorities are the next few years and where our money needs to go and because we'll get the study and oh it'll be great and we want to do this but but we have to be realistic about what we can afford and when we could make it happen and and if we could get some additional grant funny money to make the implementation Im, implementation happen and it wasn't a huge match maybe maybe it would all work right. mm -hmm. but I just I just want to be a well, it's like Monroe I don't, Street and I don't, Charles Avenue. Like, I don't want to yeah. spend what we can't afford. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I want to live within our means, mm -hmm. and I just see some really big projects coming up that we have to figure out how to afford. So, whoops. That's why we added the additional step of going to the infrastructure committee to put it in some context before okay. going forward. Cause Which I think is great. We're struggling with that <coughs> all the time. And that's fine. I'm happy to stay out of that whole world. I've got it, you know, I was I've just sitting here in the audience. I brought down a dozen planning studies we could do, you know. So if that's how you feel, I can throw something together for well, anything. Let's, let's find out. If anything from, from a housing study to a view shed analysis to a mm -hmm. downtown traffic circulation plan. I can go all day with planning studies. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, is there anything, my question would be for, for you as staff and, and for Public Works as staff of, is there something that's sort of in the queue already that we could use this for, or is this a good use for it? And I, we have to take your advice. You the know, municipal planning grant. I mean, just to, and you probably already understand this, but the municipal planning grant isn't implementation money. It's not to build something. I understand that. It's only to plan something out. But there, is there something that we had from a year or two ago that we wanted to study and we could plan, and or is this the one? And yeah. that's what we need you to tell us of like, is this a really good use of our money and of, of their money, I should say. It's hard, it's hard to know in this seat whether it's a good project or if it's just a new one and we still have a whole bunch that we need to, to deal with. It's hard to tell. Um, so that's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So, so your plan is then to go to the, to, to the it uh, like it. infrastructure committee run it by them yep. and then yep. come back with your final grant re uh, requ request yep. <laughs> better move jennifer we've slept too long <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not i'm not, I'm not kidding okay. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> emmy so you're just like you have to move <laughs> the exit music is starting <laughs> final grant request uh, at our 26 meeting yep okay so there's there's time to change things around and like you know with this conversation i'm kind of like leaning back toward the the planning okay. the planning Cool a little bit. It's fine. Uh, I'd like to say something uh, in favor of the Seymour's. I mean, yeah. it, is a, it is a major artery in the sort of the downtown complex. And uh, I think having a plan on how it can be improved, um, I, I mean, in other words, I, I don't know mm -hmm. what, what the infrastructure committee has you know, on its on its plate and, and, and so on and so forth, but uh, but it seems to me that this is not a just a minor thoroughfare. It's a it, you know, it's fairly it runs. I mean, it really runs into the hub of, of, of the downtown. So I. Well, let's yeah. find out. It'd be nice to know <laughs> how we might improve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. Let's go find out. There's so much focus on downtown right now, and I know I started out thinking about downtown master planning, and now I'm just trying to get practical for you and say, okay, like if we're not going to do a master plan, let's just think about how we want to do this one chunk of street, you know, mm -hmm. and try to get our ideas behind how we want downtown to look before the state comes in to do all their restoration work at the end of the railroad project. Now we can guide them a little bit if we've done mm -hmm. some process. How long would it be? Um, oh, that's what's the window for implementing or doing your planning? The study on it. once we receive the grant. Yeah, so if we got the like a, probably a year, year and a half. The reason I ask the question is, is I, I agree with Victor. I mean, I think this is this is a module of the town to think about, especially since as we look at this, the railway station, 
kind of encompasses yeah. roughly what's going to be about one third of the choices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas could be. Mm -hmm. So the effort may in fact enhance or diminish mm -hmm. the option on one, those one third choices. Mm -hmm. So I, it makes a lot of sense. And I, as, a, as our planner, I trust your, your judgment on that. If, if you think this is an appropriate one, then you're making a good argument for me in my mind. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm just to clarify, I'm not necessary. I'm not opposed to the idea. Oh, no. I just, no. I, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. be conscious of priorities. Money. And yeah, well, and those mm -hmm. are important. I mean, I, yeah. I don't disagree yeah. with you. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you think that this is a good use of, I'm, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I just don't, I want us to get all excited about in, implementing something wonderful and not have the funds available to do it. I so. think that's wise. So I'll try to calculate before the infrastructure committee meeting what a match might look like. Okay, that would be useful. Yeah. Okay. It matched to the planning? Yeah. Um, to an implementation. To implementation. Yeah, thinking like it's all well and good for me to give you a plan to put on yourself, but then when it comes to applying for this downtown transportation grant, the implementation funds to make it happen, is that match available in their infrastructure budget? You know, it's, is it, is it, seems, it just seems like one of those things that may be such a crapshoot because you don't have a plan, you don't know what they're asking right. you to do. So right, I, but if right. but if she can tell us that that particular implementation grant is a fifty percent match or a ten percent match, mm -hmm. that gives us a little bit of information. You know, it's yeah. more than we ever have. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll all wait to see what comes back from from, uh, from them. Yeah. So, uh, but thanks. Thank you. Don't yeah. go. Appreciate don't it. Go. Don't go. Don't go. Oh, don't go. <laughs> That's right. Now. We're not done talking. <laughs> she's going she's gonna to provide moral support to Laura as Laura walks us through the vivid <laughs> mid bike and head pop up <laughs> project. So you know about the vivid mid project that we've been talking about it. It was a bike and pedestrian pop up demo project that we had. Um, for a couple of weeks. Um, it was a collaborative effort between the town, local motion, the BMP, Safe Routes, and our regional planning commission. And we had volunteers set up um, the pop-ups at Main Street and Merchants Row, Seymour Street, which we've been talking about, and the entrance to the Marble Works along Maple Street. So we've gotten some feedback. I, I think both Jennifer and I received emails as well as the survey responses. Maybe you've had a chance to read the comments. So you can see, sort of like our marijuana survey, you know, <laughs> you can go either way. <laughs> and that's what we learned pretty much, you know, like you could go either way, you know, like some people really loved the opportunity for pedestrians of being more visible with those bollards and others didn't like the aesthetics of the bollards, you know, so. Um, it doesn't have to be like that aesthetic, but we were trying to help people see what it would feel like if the pedestrian could nudge out a little bit further in the crosswalk and the motorist could see them and the pedestrian could see the motorist better. That was the intent, and to beautify things at the same time. People like the planters, you know. Um, and most people like the planters. Most people, though, some wanted different plants in the planters, <laughs> you know. Um, and They're not weeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, so they were intended to have more color, um, but I think that the town was also trying to multi-purpose, you know, and buy plants that could go into our gardens and would be resilient and could withstand our weather conditions and salt. So they picked those kinds of plants that could go into our gardens. That's why we had the plants we did and not mums, which weren't blooming quite yet either. So. So anyway, it still represented well what we were trying to um, do, and I think people liked the concept. Um, I heard, as Jennifer did and maybe you did, that people liked the walkway along Maple Street, and some people found it confusing. You know, but what we were trying to do was show, really, how simple it was to create just a four-foot walkway, protected walkway there. And so it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And that was the beauty of the demo project. Does, wouldn't cost a lot, doesn't really take a lot, you know, to do something like that. So 
we can decide, you know, for not very much money if we wanted to do any of that a little bit in the future. Um, people like the crosswalks, I would say, you know, the mock-up crosswalks that we had on Seymour Street and the one that was on Maple Street. And, and people are creatures of habit, so even though you created that walkway into the marble works, they still walked on the other side. <laughs> Um, um, it did calm traffic. It yes. definitely did do that. Yes, it did. And it directed traffic again because we created a divided mm -hmm. marking for the curves, and that seemed to be interesting to motorists to learn really where they should be in that road as they're coming around those curves, which is important for, the, for them and the pedestrians. So I think those are some of the highlights of what we learned from a pop-up demo project plus it doesn't cost a lot to do that kind of a project mm -hmm. um, and it was our first time really using the local motion pop-up trailer so for me that was a big learning curve and now that I've gotten into something like that I can see its value for other communities and the value it was for us to just be able to whip up whip out stuff and put it up you know and really one day we did that in one day um, although it took a lot of planning to get to that one day <laughs> and figure out where we were going to be. It feels like a nice way to develop a project. So in 2014 or 15, there was a traffic calming study, and it had recommendations. Then you know, we're following it up with a demonstration project, and we're getting feedback at that point. And so theoretically, one would apply for a grant, like the MPG grant, maybe not this year, maybe some other time, would apply for a grant like that to design the streetscape, and that would have a public process associated with it where we would use the input from the demo project with new input from people to try to get the best design, and then you would get implementation funds after that. And it just seems like a really nice way to, to implement a project, so I'm pretty proud of us. And the other thing we should mention is that you tried to create an identity for the project called Vivid Mid. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to say anything more about that? Yeah, we tried to brainstorm some kind of branding for the project, and we're hoping that um, we could use that Vivid Mid logo later on for other things that happen in downtown during the course of the railroad project. So, yeah. I, I'm curious what the rest of you thought of the project. I was surprised. There were multiple comments that, of people thinking that uh, the planters, distra saying the planters distracted them and they thought they created more of a dangerous situation so they must be flower lovers or something but oh. I, I didn't find that myself but uh, mm -hmm. did you I mean in the comments there were multiple comments about feeling that it was more dangerous than less dangerous to have those I noticed that the, the, the words confusing and distracting came up a lot and I wondered if that was just someone realizing they have to slow down like if that's part of the traffic calming thing mm -hmm. you know to create I wonder if it was some of it was the fact that they were basically apple crates as opposed to something that would be more typically found, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a design planner that's really clear. It's not something small. It's something really clear that, okay, i got to slow because it's gonna, I'm going by it. Bill had mentioned filter socks and how those might have worked, and I thought that was a neat idea for the future. Hay bales or, you know, filter socks yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to create different things. I had people thought that there was going to be planters all over town and that was just the first phase of putting planters ah. out so they didn't really understand the um, having looked at the plans ahead of time I could sort of see where it was a bump out but I think a lot of people didn't have the vision of that they just saw planters and they're like what are they going to put planters out at every crosswalk and I was like no and so I had to explain it to a couple people and then they're like oh okay that makes sense and that's why there's those white poles there I think it just really confused people who hadn't seen the prep materials going in ahead mm -hmm. but those the people that did know about it ahead of time understood what was there mm -hmm. it was everyone else that didn't so I don't know it's kind of like our bridge project kind of you have to sort of know the plans <laughs> to know what's coming <laughs> you can put it all over the paper it doesn't you know yeah. it just well, what did you guys think? I liked it, I, oh. but I did want to say that I liked it, and I thought it was interesting to sort of go out and see how much it narrowed things down, how much um, it sort of, uh, I like the crosswalks the best, of mm -hmm. just sort of seeing a crosswalk where there wasn't one before is really interesting um, and helpful. 
in. So. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it pointed out. I mean, I, I I go on foot and drive that that Maple, Maple Street. Street numerous times, and um, I rather liked it for one reason: it slowed down the traffic. It really did. I mean, I think mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, and in fact, I've noticed since since they've taken it away um, that people come around those turns um, really faster than they should. And they, I mean, you, and 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 because it made it seem narrower, people really did slow down and and hug their side of the road as they were going around. And and um, uh, that was, I think. Uh, I think it highlighted you know, that this is a you know, mm -hmm. this is a, a much used passageway. Yeah, it definitely was and, more than I and, thought. Uh, <laughs> and and yet, uh, you know, it really mm -hmm. is inadequate for 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 its uses. And this mm -hmm. suggested an order in which it could be used. Um, and I I think um, in that sense, I think it was beneficial. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. that. In that sense, and, and uh, annoying maybe in some ways because you had these obstacles that weren't there before. But I think I really wondered about doing it there because I thought the nature of that thin winding road already yeah. did the job of slowing traffic down. So I yeah. thought, ah, oh, we don't really do we, you know, like. Uh, but we learned, yeah, we did, yeah, and yeah. Uh, there were two kids that were, you know, just that was the first week of school, and I was restoring some of the markings and. And I said, so what do you think? And they said, oh, we love it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, mm -hmm. so, and at the same time, I watched other people not use it, you know, like that were walking in the old path. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know, what about you guys? Did you, because you're a walker, Nick. I was wondering I, what you, you thought. Know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of gaining knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, what it did is, at various locations, it showed an experimental basis of what could happen, um, what seemed to work, what didn't. I think the opinions that I heard really varied on location mm -hmm. around town. Um, you know, that, that Maple Street, I think the biggest issue that came up is it was perception of narrowing it down almost too much. Mm -hmm. But that's also new. I mean, it's, 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 this was new, and there was some objection to this, this roundabout in front, and it works just fine. So. I think just the fact that gaining the knowledge is beneficial, and it's stuff that we can use. You know, going back to Jennifer's suggestion of Seymour Street, um, that's one more bit of information that we can put into the equation of what this can eventually be. Um, so, I, I think it's a it's a fine idea. I, think, uh, um, I didn't see any reason to object to any of it. Um, I thought, like what Susan said, it was a great, I didn't happen to see the Maple Street one. I just did not get out there while it was going, so I can't really speak to that one. Um, I do think it's a useful tool if we ever want to consider putting a crosswalk somewhere where there isn't one, being able to test it out. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really a good way of doing, you know, putting up something temporary and just seeing does it work. So Yeah, we kept all of the instructions for how to put down a, a crosswalk like what the regs are and how to do it it's pretty easy spray <laughs> chalk nice <laughs> and it was fascinating trying to paint that crosswalk in front of greg's and you know almost getting mowed down several times was it you or me it was you that finally said get out of the road like this just isn't happening work. i was so doggedly <laughs> trying to get the paint you know straight and you were right it was just not worth it so what, what, what a great hands-on way to realize that that's not how to design <laughs> it's a terrifying it. terrifying areas. Get out. <laughs> but you actually finish the crosswalk to nowhere. I mean, the, the sidewalk comes there, and you have the mm -hmm. crosswalk going up, you know, up when it comes into Maple Street, and then you, the sidewalk comes out, and right. you have a, a crosswalk a there. Crosswalk that's there, where it worked. But it, yeah. and, 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 of course, it yeah. goes nowhere, and, uh -huh. and, and this... This made it go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought. Made it logical. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Alrighty. Thanks. Okay. Check warrants. Check warrants. Woo! This was a whopper. This was like practically half of our budget, almost five million dollars. How about that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
Because. Because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had to pay our school taxes, which were for about almost four million of that. <laughs> so like almost most of it, you know, so that's what you're looking at. Plus we also paid out all of our social service um, commitments and usually we pay it in three increments, but this year we decided to just do it all at once. It was easier for us and we thought it's better for the agencies. So that's why this particular check warrant is as high as it is and we also had a lot of benefits that were paid and our usual electric which is close to 20 million every 20,000 rather um, I was going to say oh my god Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, we have some work yeah. to do there a lot of <laughs> not that bad not that bad we always have work to do on I'm the electric I'm awake now <laughs> get those pumps yeah, you know, get those pumps fixed jump over here. we need to talk Kathleen <laughs> Somebody makes their matching grant for fifteen thousand a market. Yeah, isn't it? no, and 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 we and yeah. really and there were expenses related to fixing pumps, which will help electric for sure. You know, like in a couple of spots. So that's what, that's why it was so high. So I, it's all in order. It's amazing. You know, like the good work that the treasurer and our assistant treasurer do on um, maintaining all of this. So I move that we accept um, the total expenditures in the amount of ready. Four million six hundred and ninety-two thousand nine hundred eight dollars and eighty-three cents. Um, and do you need all the consisting of? Yes, please. Accounts payable of four million five hundred eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and fifty-nine dollars and seventy-nine cents, and payroll of a hundred and two thousand nine hundred and forty-nine dollars and four cents. You've got a second. I'll second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. <laughs> All right. Heard. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Kathleen. Uh, the Library Board of Trustees is hosting a public information meeting in the community room at the library to review findings of the recently completed Ilsley Library Feasibility Study and to discuss early fundraising plans. That will be tomorrow evening, September 13th at 7 p.m. in the community room at the library. Middlebury Climate Economy Initiative kickoff event September 18th at 2.30 p.m. There's a complete flyer in your packet. Uh, the event will feature community discussion forums on topics such as renewable energy generation, housing, local food, agriculture and health, inf and infrastructure. Sessions will take place at the town offices, St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, and the Ilsley Library followed by a community dinner at the Middlebury Union Middle School. Pizza. Big pizza. <laughs> um, upcoming road construction projects on Halpin Road and Chipman Park South and South Street. Um, notification letters uh, delivered to uh, impacted residents are in your packet. Uh, the Halpin Road culvert project will begin on September 5th and will require the entire roadway to be closed from September 11th to the 29th. Residents have been provided with instructions for navigating the area during the road closure period. Infrastructure improvements on Chipman Park South and South Street. This project is scheduled to begin Monday, September 11th and will include the installation of a new water main across South Street at Chipman Park West new sections of storm sewer along the west side of South Street and the north side of Chipman Park South, and a new section of sanitary sewer on the west side of South Street and down Chipman Park South. Work is expected to be completed before Thanksgiving. Also, uh, I sent the select board this afternoon uh, notice about the request for an easement uh, encroachment agreement. Um, requested by Meadow Glen Solar in association with the installation of a new solar array off Meadow Glen Drive, uh, which is south at the south end of the South Ridge development. This agreement would allow Meadow Glen Solar to install an access road over the easement the town has for its sewer line in this area. I ran it by Benj and Benj Putnam, our town attorney, and his reply was, as I read it, the town is not being asked to give up any easement rights or otherwise convey any interest in the easement property. It is just being asked to confirm that the improvements are being used 
proposed can coexist with the town's existing sewer easement. Under these circumstances, it seems like something like this falls within the scope of Public Works Authority, and I don't think it requires select board approval, nor should it require a 24 BSA 1061 proceeding. So based on this, uh, given that there is some uh, urgency associated with this, I would like to sign off on the encroachment agreement um, and go forward on that basis. So I'm just notifying you and uh, gave you the opportunity to add that to your agenda if there was any concern. So there will be a driveway essentially over the town's sewer line. And that has been reviewed by Public Works and the Wastewater Department. Okay. And that's it for the town manager's report. Okay. Any questions of Kathleen? Uh, board member concerns. Laura. Well, I think the, our town manager already referenced the things I would have spoken to, you know, about our library meeting coming up tomorrow and the climate economy initiative on Monday, the 18th. So I um, can't think of anything else right now. Okay. Victor? Susan? I'm excited that the South Street project is getting going. So. I'm just mm -hmm. going to leave it at that. <laughs> who's, the, who's the resident that's come to all our meetings? Oh, what's his name? What's his name? I could just see him jumping we up. We called him the honorary infrastructure committee member because he came to every meeting that we talked about it. it. Richard Sincanera? I think that sounds, yeah. No, that's it's it's close. Yeah, it's close enough. I could, when she read that, I, I could see him that. jumping up and down. Yeah. <laughs> Circle back to you. <laughs> Nick? I just want to congratulate the uh, Congregational Church on their opening of their new edition. I, mean, I actually took up the, took them up on the invitation to go to the open house Saturday. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a glorious building. I mean, it is really nicely designed. It's, it looks very functional. It's, it, it really has a nice, it's, it's going to be an iconic structure and a, and a nice addition to the town. So congratulations on a wonderful project. Thanks for doing a part two. Don't know where look better. I don't have anything other than just reiterate the climate economy thing, and I just wanted to point out that that's next Monday, the 18th. It's next Monday, and there's free dinner mm -hmm. <laughs> next <Pizza>. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I just I hope people come out and participate, and we have a good process. So. We have an alibi on the far right. Heather? I or, forgot uh, to mention that Laura? we also have the community jamboree this Saturday, the 16th, and Woofstock. Yeah, a lot, you know, like that's going on in the community, so we'll be vibrating in Middlebury. Um, but the community jamboree is a celebration of Actor's 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. and I am your liaison to Actor, and it's been really busy this past year. In fact, I've like wondered if I could keep up with it. It's so busy because they are in the midst of a, a merger you know which they are still working out all the structure around that and um, and of course with the downtown hub location and and so they really want us to celebrate their anniversary so everyone's invited and it's right here at the Middlebury Rec Park and it will include the bike smart trailer so kids can come and try out bikes um, it's the same trailer we've used for training at Mary Hogan, so some kids will know it and others from the wider community will have a chance to to do that. And they have a whole lineup of other things. Stuff the bus with um, food, you know, that'll go to the food shelf. I think that the Humane Society will be there too. I don't know how they're gonna do that in Wolfstock, but somehow they're doing that. And if you, um, if you, do the bike smart training get one of these really cool reflectors so um i really i don't think it matters what age you are but you know flashes in three ways mm -hmm. and we'll be getting more of these for walk and roll to school day prizes as well it's pretty cool um so that it, you can be visible on the bus on your way to the bus walking to school <laughs> <laughs> walking to select board meeting <laughs> wherever but anyway that community jamboree I think it starts uh, I'm trying to remember the time that it starts it's posted in the Addison Independent and elsewhere I'm sorry I don't 
know it off the top of my head, but don't miss it. Okay. Uh, I don't have any, but we do have need for an executive session on some contract negotiations that we're involved with and Kathleen needs to get our guidance on. Would you be willing to lead us into executive Certainly. session? So in accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of pending contract nego negotiations would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the pending contract negotiations in public. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. 